So hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video, I have some easy and delicious fall pantry recipes to feed your family. So if you're new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. We are starting off today with an awesome chicken crock pot recipe. You know, I love putting chicken in the crock pot because it cooks up so quickly. It's so tender. You can shred it so easily. Now today's recipe is for crock pot garlic Parmesan chicken. For this recipe, you're going to need about one and a half to two pounds of chicken. Any kind will do. I like to use the skinless, boneless chicken breast. You are going to need a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's garlic parmesan. You're going to need a little bit of shredded parmesan cheese. You can also use like provolone or mozzarella, whatever you have in the refrigerator will do just fine. You're going to need a can of cream of chicken soup and a block of Philadelphia cream cheese. Now we're also gonna be using a bunch of spices for this. I'm going to be seasoning my chicken really well with um, salt and pepper, garlic powder, some paprika, probably a little bit of basil, and some dried parsley. I sprayed my crock pot with some non-stick cooking spray. I have my chicken down in the bottom there. I've split them in half to help them cook a little bit quicker. I'm gonna be adding some salt and pepper, some garlic powder, a little bit of ranch seasoning, parsley, this is Dash. I'm also going to add just a little bit of minced onion, some basil, and a little bit of paprika. On top of that, I'm just going to empty my one can of cream of chicken soup. I'm just gonna put that on top there, kind of spread it on top of your chicken breasts. And then I'm going to add, I don't know, probably, I would say about three quarters of the bottle of our Parmesan garlic sauce. Just make sure that your chicken is covered. And then I'm going to add pieces of our cream cheese. Now our Parmesan cheese, we are going to save until the end of the recipe after we've shredded up the chicken. We're gonna cover this and cook it on low for four to six hours. So it has been about four hours and we are going to check to see the temperature of our chicken here. Oh yeah, this is like totally done. It's well over 200, so. I'm going to take the chicken out, shred it all up, add it back to the pot with a little bit of the shredded Parmesan cheese, mix it up, and we are ready to serve. My favorite way to serve crock pot Parmesan chicken is over some buttered garlic orzo, which is basically your regular orzo with a little bit of butter and a little bit of garlic powder. But it is just as good over rice or mashed potatoes. I find that with most crock pot meals, they are often even better the next day, and this recipe is no different. This one is so good, I would even serve it as a part of like a buffet for an upcoming holiday, and it would be perfect for a fun family gathering. 
So here's the thing I love most about pantry meals. Although I meal plan every week, there are just some days I don't want to make what I had planned. So I love having the option to go down to my food storage room, gather a couple of ingredients, and make a simple family favorite. It just takes the stress off of your day and makes dinner time so much easier. So as you can see, my pantry shelves are a little bit empty, so there definitely will be a fall pantry stocking video coming your way really soon. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you want to see. I plan on just showing you what I stock my shelves with for fall and how I plan for my winter pantry. Baked rigatoni is one of those recipes that I always have the ingredients to in my pantry. You can use a jarred sauce for this, which makes it even easier. Now today I'm gonna to be making my own tomato sauce for the recipe. I'm going to try to link for you um, a video where I have my standard tomato sauce recipe, so you can either try that or just get yourself a couple jars of jarred sauce. So for today, for my sauce, I pulled a can of tomato puree. I have a 28 ounce can of tomato sauce, and then I have a small container of crushed tomatoes. I think the addition of crushed tomatoes to your tomato sauce really gives it a fresh and authentic Italian taste. Now these together are going to make more sauce than we will need for the recipe, but I always have little bags of sauce in my freezer that I like to use, you know, for small meals, for pizza sauce, whatever. I need just a little bit of sauce to add to a recipe. So we are also going to be adding some ground sausage to this recipe. This is about a pound of ground sweet Italian sausage that I picked up from Walmart. I've used them several times. It really has some great flavor. You'll need at least a 16 ounce container of ricotta cheese. You'll need some mozzarella and provolone shredded cheese for this, and you will need a carton of rigatoni pasta. Honestly, you can use whatever pasta you have on hand, as long as it's like, you know, one of those um, tubal type pastas. Rigatoni is one of my favorites. It always has a great end result, and everybody seems to like it. So whether or not you're making your own sauce or you're using jarred sauce, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to brown your sausage in a large saute pan. I don't even add any oil or anything to my pan first because there is enough fat in the sausage to, to cook this up just perfectly for what we want to use it for. So I always like to break it up a little bit to make it easier to brown and we are just going to brown it up until it is cooked through. So at this point, our sausage is completely cooked through and you can add your two large jars of tomato sauce or you can add your cans of tomato puree and sauce if you're making your own. I always like to cook the sausage completely all the way through even though it's gonna cook in the sauce and then later in the oven, I like to start off with completely cooked meat. So because I'm making my own sauce, I'm going to add my jar or my can of tomato sauce. And then I'm going to add my can of puree. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this as well. And then I'm going to add my crushed tomatoes and the rest of my seasonings. So my sauce is all put together. I'm letting that simmer for about 20, 25 minutes. I filled up my pot here with some salted water and we're going to get the rigatoni boiling away and then we're going to prep our ricotta cheese. I have my pasta water started on the stove and we're going to prep our ricotta cheese. So you just wanna take like a medium bowl, you're going to add the whole container of the ricotta cheese inside. We're going to add some garlic powder. You're just gonna eyeball this, put it in as much as you'd like. I'm also going to add in some parsley flakes. Oh, 
a little bit of Mrs. Dash. And I like to add in one egg. So we're gonna mix that all up and set it aside until we're ready for it. So my water has come to a boil and I'm going to add pretty much the whole box here of the rigatoni. I may not use all of it, but I want to have as much as I think I'm going to need. We can always save the leftover for another day, another meal. So we're gonna put that in there and just cook it according to the package directions. I have my baking dish all prepped. I have it sprayed really well with non-stick cooking spray. This is a nine by 11 dish. It's a little bit shorter, but it's a whole lot deeper. And you're going to want a deep dish for this recipe. I have my oven all heated up to 375 degrees. So to start off, we're going to take some of our sauce and lay it in the bottom of our pan. Just kind of swirl it around so it covers the bottom of your dish. And then you're going to take about half of your pasta and lay that on top. So I've cooked my rigatoni to al dente because it is going to cook a little bit in the oven and you definitely do not want your pasta to be mushy. So that's about half of the pasta. Before we add our ricotta, I like to add just a little bit more of the sauce to really cover our noodles up really well. And you can even mix this layer up with what you laid down on the bottom, just so that your pasta has a little bit of a coating of sauce on it. All right, so that looks really good. So our next layer is going to be our ricotta cheese. Now you can mix this all up in it or you can just pour it on top. What I like to do is I just like to pour it on top and spread it out kind of, you know, like when you make lasagna. And then just go ahead and spread it on top. So I have my layer of ricotta cheese on my pasta and sauce. And then what I like to do is I like to add the remaining of my pasta into the ricotta bowl. And then I'm going to add some pasta to that and I'm gonna mix it up really well and then lay it on top. Now I almost forgot a very important step which is to add a little bit of your mozzarella and provolone shredded cheese on top of your ricotta cheese layer just a little bit just to give it some of that cheesy goodness. And then we're going to add our layer of pasta. So I am just going to add a little bit of sauce to the top here. just a little bit so our pasta is not dry at all. And I am also going to add some Pecorino Romano cheese on top, just a little sprinkling, just to give it another added layer of flavor. And then we're going to add some more mozzarella and provolone. And then just to make it a little pretty, we're going to add a little sprinkling of some dried parsley. So we are going to cover this up with some aluminum foil. We're going to bake it in the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. So I've just taken it out of the oven and it looks so yummy. We're gonna let it sit for a little bit so that everything can firm up a little bit before we serve it. That way it doesn't get too sloppy and it kind of holds together. So I will show you what it looks like when it's all plated up.
This is our baked rigatoni all served up. It is just so good. I make this all the time and traditionally I make it as one of our dishes on Christmas Eve. It is a great substitute for lasagna. It's quicker to put together as you can see and it is just as delicious. Next up, I have a really awesome recipe for a lazy Saturday afternoon. This is for crock pot hash brown taco casserole. Now for this recipe, you are going to need some shredded hash browns, frozen hash browns, any kind will do. You'll need some taco seasoning, whether it be packaged or one that you make up on your own. You'll need a can of Rotel, a can of cheddar cheese soup. You're going to need about two cups of any kind of shredded cheddar cheese that you like. This four state cheddar is our favorite. You'll need a little bit of sour cream and you're going to need some cooked ground turkey. So to start this recipe off, we are going to cook our ground turkey over like a medium heat until it is completely cooked through. And then to that, we are going to add our packet of taco seasoning. The turkey is cooked all the way through. I'm going to add my packet of taco seasoning and I'm going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes or so. I have our turkey cooking on the stove and in this small bowl, I'm gonna combine our cheddar cheese soup and our can of Rotel. Now to this, I'm also going to add about a quarter to a half a cup of sour cream, and we're gonna mix that all together. I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna eyeball it a little bit. I would say that's about, probably a little more than a half a cup, but a little extra sour cream never hurt anybody. So we're just gonna mix this all up together and set it aside. So in my prepared crock pot, I have our frozen hash browns. Now I just sprayed our crock pot with some non-stick cooking spray. And to the top of this, we're going to add our turkey. And then we are just going to top our cooked turkey with our mixture of the cheddar cheese soup, the Rotel, and the sour cream. And just kind of smooth that a little bit on top. And then we're going to take about a cup of our two cups of shredded cheddar cheese and we're going to just sprinkle that on top. And then we are going to cover and cook on low for four to six hours or high four hours. So it's been about four hours. Our taco casserole, our taco hash brown casserole has been cooking away. So I want to check it um, with my thermometer just to see what temperature it is at. So let's see, let's stick it in this way. Oh, I would say it is pretty much done. We're about 183, which I think is perfect. So I am going to shut this off and make some veggies and plate this up. Here's our crock pot hash brown taco casserole all ready for dinner. This is a meal in itself. It has those hash brown potatoes, some yummy taco meat, lots of cheese. It just makes it a perfect Saturday night dinner. I'm serving it tonight with a side of salad, some tortilla chips with a little extra sour cream. So that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching today's Crock-Pot Pantry Meal video. Be sure to comment down below if you try any of these recipes. I would love to know what the family thinks. 
Join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life. And don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you all back as part of our growing YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.